Hello, it's Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers speaking. I'm talking about a book which is actually very important because it goes to the heart of our professional status and what we do. It's about the Solicitor's Code of Conduct 2007 as updated this year, 2009. This is my Flickr review here and this is the book. It's not a big book, it's just over 300 pages, nice index at the back. A lot of detailed stuff. You can probably see coloured little bits and pieces for each of the numbered chapters and so on. Inside you've got a whole range of detail about the specific rules in chapters. And at the front you've got a uh, preface and various other bits and pieces talking about core duties. It's published by the Solicitor's Regulation Authority and it includes the 2009 regulations. The review is on Flickr and it's also going to be on YouTube and I've given it with my wife Elizabeth Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers we've given it the title Serious Required Reading if you're a solicitor and a guide to your rights if you aren't which will give people an idea as customers of what to expect in a modern age now I'm going to make some comments, and I dare say some people may think I'm being a little sarcastic. I'm not, but we have to recognise we are in the age of regulation. So this is what we've said. If you are a solicitor, the Solicitor's Code of Conduct 2007 should be a, a permanently to hand on your nearest bookshelf particularly in view of the volume of regulation now faced by solicitors and the deregulation of conditional fee agreements, which has led to more of an emphasis on conduct. This, the 2009 edition, is published almost two years after the 2007 edition. It reflects the accelerating pace of change in legal services and the sector as a whole in what I've described as the age of regulation because that's what we have and make no mistake about it. Core duties and rules and guidance written in plain English are logically laid out and of the highest standards we expect uh, from the Law Society's uh, excellent publications and they don't let us down here. This is an important book. In addition to the guidance notes in the code the Solicitor's Regulation Authority, the SRA, publishes freestanding guidance from time to time, alerting you to new issues of public interest. And you can find that on their website, which I've given you. I'm going to be a bit careful with the URLs on, on the internet, but it's www.sra.org.uk. Even if you're not a solicitor, you'll find it useful to be aware of the standards of service and conduct you should expect from any solicitor you instruct. Makes sense in a business way, of course. The sections on core duties in Rule 1 uh, and client relations are certainly pertinent. And do note section 2.03, dealing with information about cost. For example, you must give your client the best information possible about the likely overall cost of the matter both at the outset and when appropriate as the matter progresses, and so forth. So there. Remember, conditional fee agreements and all the problems associated with the way that cases will change over the course of their little lives. Key changes in this edition reflect the Legal Services Act 2007 regarding firm-based regulation and legal disciplinary practices, which of course is the thing that we're all very well aware of. These apply to all managers and employees in firms. Rules that have been extensively amended include the following, which I would suggest are the linchpin of a modern practice in many ways. Rule 12, framework of practice. 14, recognised bodies, that's incorporated practice. Rule 29, requirements of practice. And Rule 23, application of the rules. Other important changes have been made to Rule 5 in particular, that's Business Management in England and Wales, and Rule 7 on Publicity. As Peter Williamson of the SRA points out, quote, Professional ethics form the very bedrock of the delivery of legal services, 
adding that the core duties set out in Rule 1 of the Code define the values to be displayed in everything lawyers and their colleagues do. So, integrity and independence, together with fairness and the values of equality and diversity, must remain constant, um, whatever the structures in which we work. And he's right, he has a, a very important point to make. It's heartening, therefore, to know that the SRA is highly principled and upholds such high standards for the protection of the public. It's to be expected that all solicitors in England and Wales will be aware of the content of this code and will at all times endeavour to comply with it. That's why it's serious required reading for all on modern conduct in the age of regulation. And I hope you find it as useful as I certainly have in pointing us in the directions that we're going in in the 21st century. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.